I switched from using JavaScript to TypeScript a few years ago, and I still see these cannot find undefined of object errors. I thought when I use TypeScript, this shouldn't happen if I have strongly typed objects. And in today's video, I'm going to be going over three common mistakes with TypeScript and three of my favorite advanced techniques for typing. JavaScript on its own doesn't actually provide typing. And that's why Microsoft invented TypeScript, which is a synthetic superset of JavaScript that provides static typing. It allows writing JavaScript code, but actually with typing all the variables, functions, classes, and etc. Here's a quick example. I have a file here that has a constant of movie with the name, director, and year, and we have a function called getMovieLand. Now, this is JavaScript, so you don't actually see any issues here, even though the length is not defined in the movie object and then at runtime this will just return undefined and with TypeScript we can define a type for the movie which is the name director and year and we can define the object then with the type with all the values then for the get movie length this we can see here that this already complains while coding and we can see an error here the property length does not exist on type movie so we can see this while coding and fix this issue hence the biggest trend of TypeScript. So yeah, that's TypeScript in a nutshell. Let's move on to the three common mistakes. The first common mistake that I see and it's gotten me in the past as well is assuming types without validation. Now this is not obvious one really, but TypeScript doesn't actually validate the types. So you will need to validate each of the types for it all of your objects. And this is easy to do when you're actually defining the objects, but it can be very easily overlooked when the, when the objects are user input or they're coming from a schema-less database like DynamoDB. For example, if we have a create movie endpoint, this is an express endpoint where it gets a request and in the body of the request we're saying that the body will be of type movie. So each of the properties will have the type that we expect and we can define a movie and we can add it to that place or whatever we want to do it with it. So this will not throw any errors, but this doesn't actually mean that the user will send the correct types. For example, the user might not send all of the details because we're not validating the input here. The user might send the year as a string and so on. So with a simple validate input middleware here, we can get all the properties from the request body. We can check if they're defined. If they're not, it's just gonna throw an error. So it's not even gonna get to the actual endpoint. And then it also checks the types of each of the property. There's also a better way for do this. And this is just an example. I've made a video on user input validation check it out now when we get to the create movie endpoint we know that these are going to be defined we're going to have the correct type no the next one is also kind of obvious is using any so any is the type of typescript that allows you to bypass actually the typing and this makes typescript as useless as just using javascript really because if you're not if you're not going to define what the type of the property is then there's really no reason to use typescript is there I know sometimes you want to be fast and maybe certain cases we don't actually know what the value is going to be, but TypeScript has different types for different stuff. So if you're using any, you're not really using the potential of TypeScript. That's my take on it. And the third common mistake that I've come across is using type assertions too excessively. Now, TypeScript allows us to typecast and assert certain types of variables, which is usually used whenever you use libraries and stuff like that, but, but that doesn't really mean that we should be using these too often. It's basically using any for your objects and types because it doesn't actually check the types while you're coding. So here's a quick example. I have an interface movie which has name and length in minutes, which are a string and a number. I have Titanic data, which the name is a string, the length in minutes is a string, which is supposed to be a number. And we can define an object here with the type of movie and we can type typecast the Titanic data to unknown first and then to movie and this will not throw any errors. If I remove the as unknown this will show an error and basically it's gonna say you can't convert the type because some of the properties are incompatible. Now on to my favorite advanced typing techniques. The first one is using utility types. TypeScript provides utility types for different situations. There's a lot of them that you can find on the TypeScript website, but I'm gonna go through a few of them in this example. And this is one of my favorite ways to transform certain types into different types. If I have a type of a movie of ID name and length in minutes, and this is what I save my database, the ID would be like an incremental number or something like that. And 
if I have a create movie endpoint, I would wanna remove the ID from the input and create a different type, which is called create movie input. And this is gonna omit the ID property. So now this type will have only the length and length in minutes and name properties. And this is very neat because if I change the movie, if I expand it in the future, I wanna add like release date, then I don't have to change all the other types that I've created using utility types. This will just work because I'm only omitting the ID and everything else will follow the first type. I think this is very cool and you can use others like partial as well. If I have an update movie endpoint and I only want to send certain properties in that endpoint, like I like allow the user to update only certain types, I can I can set this up as partial of create movie input. So this will have each of the properties, but they're all going to be either the undefined or whatever the type it was. And again, if I add a new one in the future, this will follow that and I don't have to change any of these. There you go. You can probably see why this is my favorite one and I use these regularly. Maybe not as much as I should, but I really love these. Another favorite one of mine is using key off. So basically, we can use key off to reference the keys of an object. So here's an example using key off. I have a type of movie here, which is the same as before. And I have an object here that is of type movie and has all the properties defined. But then I have another type here, which is get property type. And this is using generic types. This is an extra one for you, by the way. I love using generic types as well. Um, so this will be a generic type. And then we can reference the type and the key of the, that type or whatever other stuff we can use from this. So this basically defines what our function is, all the parameters, the types of our parameters and what it's going to return. So let's just go through this quickly. The object will be of type, of the type where we say this is going to be. The key is going to be key of that type and the return is going to be the value of that type. So this is now the function that's defined and it's using the get property type. With the generic type now it's going to be the movie. So we assign the movie to the generic type and we don't have to define the properties and the return value of our function. This will get that from the get property type. So we can see the object here is of type movie. And we can see the key is key of movie. And it's gonna return the value of those, that key. So here's trying to use this um, get property. I send the object Titanic and the name of the, the key, which is the name, this will return Titanic. If I try to use a key that doesn't exist of, for that type, this will throw an error saying that it's not assignable of parameter key of movie, which means that the type movie doesn't have this key. And But if we define this or any other one, this means that now we don't have to expand the types for this function. This will already follow all of the keys for movie. If we send director in here, this will work. And the third advanced typing technique that I really love is map types. So this is basically using utility types, but we are the ones defining the utility type. And here's an example. If I have a type here defined optional, and this takes in the generic type and each of the properties, which are any of the key of type is gonna make them optional. So this adds the optional of any of the keys and they're gonna return the value type of that key. I know it's a bit confusing, but let's just show you the example. This is a type of movie and has name, which is a string and length in minutes, which is a number. And both of these are required properties. But now we have a mutable movie, which is equals to optional of movie. So this basically replaces the generic type here. And now this is gonna return a name, which is an optional, which is gonna be a string or undefined and length in minutes, which is gonna be number or undefined. And again, the beauty of these things is if we expand the movie type in the future, we don't have to change anything else. And the mutable movie now has the description and it's gonna be an optional as well. This is basically using partial, but this just shows you an idea of how you can use map types and define some of your own utility types. I do think that TypeScript is great, great addition on JavaScript. I love being able to type my, my code and 
this really helps a lot of the times to figure out errors while coding. And I think that's like, I think I mentioned this a few times in this video, but the greatest thing about TypeScript is seeing those errors while coding. And you can enable strict typing as well. So when you compile your code into JavaScript, it's gonna throw an error if some of the types are wrong or not matching whatever you want it to match. I really recommend investing some time learning TypeScript. You can use it for React as well. I haven't really gone into React here, but it's basically the same thing. You can type your components and the props for each of the components. But yeah, I hope you liked this video. I hope you learned something. Let me know if there's any feedback in the comments. I go through all the comments on all my videos. That's been it for this video. Enjoy the rest of your day. Happy coding. Bye.